welcome to, wow, this deep dive where we go way beyond those like stoic highlight reels. Right. They're getting into Chrysippus. Yes. And yeah, he's got the whole fate thing going on. Of course, that's what he's known for. But if you really dig into Chrysippus, there's like layers upon layers. How yeah. our minds work, wisdom, virtue. He even talks about, are you ready for this? Anchovies. The desirability of anchovies, yeah. It's a wild ride. Get ready to see this ancient thinker in a whole new way. So I got to ask, when you hear the name Chrysippus, what's the first thing that pops into your head? Well, he was a Stoic philosopher, lived a couple of centuries BC, and he's actually considered the logician of the early Stoic movement. Exactly. And that's a big deal because Stoicism, that's not just some dusty old philosophy. No, no, no. it's incredibly relevant today. We see a huge resurgence of interest in Stoicism. People finding wisdom in these ancient ideas. Now, with Chrysippus, everyone always jumps to fate. Like, oh yeah, he's the everything happens for a reason guy. But does that really do him justice? It's such a simplification. It's oh. easy to reduce it to, oh, it's all fate and just leave it there. But uh, Chrysippus was way more nuanced than that. It's not just about this predetermined path you're forced to walk down blindly. Okay, so how do we break free from that oversimplification? What's a better way to understand Chrysippus's take on fate? So one analogy he uses that I find helpful is imagine a cylinder. Okay, I'm picturing it like one of those, what do you call them, rolling pins. Sure, exactly. Fate comes along and it gives that cylinder a push. The direction of that push, that's fate. Got it. So some external forces setting things in motion. But how that cylinder actually rolls. Ah, I see where you're going with this. That's where our own nature comes in. Is it heavy? Is it light? Smooth? Bumpy? So yeah, you push a bowling ball differently than you push a beach ball. Exactly. Those inherent qualities, you determine how that cylinder reacts. In the same way, we're not just these blank slates. We have our own character, our own values, our own way of making choices. It's like fate might deal you a hand of cards, but you still have to figure out how to play them. Exactly. And that's where our agency comes in. Christopher wasn't saying we're puppets. He was saying, look, there's this interplay between external forces like fate and our own internal nature. Which brings us to this really interesting idea that pops up a few times in Chrysippus. This notion of subjective value. And there's this surprisingly relatable example he uses involving a fish market in ancient Athens. Right. The Athenian anchovy. Okay, so what's the deal with these anchovies? Well, apparently Athenians back then, they weren't that impressed by their local anchovies. <laughs> Too common. You know. I have to face for radio. Something like that. Yeah. But here's the thing. In other cities, those same anchovies they were considered a delicacy. So it's all about perspective. One city's trash fish is another city's gourmet meal. Precisely, and that's what Chrysippus was getting at. What we consider good or bad isn't always inherent to the thing itself. It's influenced by our own perceptions, by our culture, by the context. That actually makes a lot of sense. Like, think about fashion trends. What's in one year is hopelessly outdated the next. Or, you know, music. One person's favorite band is another person's noise complaint. Right, it's subjective. So how can we apply this anchovy wisdom to our own lives? Are we doomed to just be at the mercy of, like, whatever everyone else thinks is valuable? I don't think so. For Crispus, this was about recognizing the power of our own minds. If we fixate on external things outside our control as the sole measure of good, we're going to be constantly disappointed. Mm -hmm. But if we can cultivate our own sense of what's truly valuable, that's where we find some inner peace. There's a lot of wisdom in that. Now, Crispus wasn't all sunshine and anchovies. True. He also had some, shall we say, realistic views on human nature. Like, he flat out said that it's impossible to totally get rid of vice. Yeah. Isn't that a little bit depressing? Like, what's the point of even trying to be a good person if we're always going to have some flaw? I get that. But to understand why he said that, I think we need to zoom out a bit and look at his overall view of the cosmos. Kudathus, he saw the universe as this interconnected web. Everything has its place, its purpose. Even the bad stuff. Even the bad stuff. He believed that even what we perceive as negative or harmful actually plays a necessary role in the grand scheme of things. Okay, so it's like, even our flaws, even the things we don't like about ourselves, they're all part of this grand cosmic tapestry. Exactly. But that doesn't mean we just give up and let vice run wild, right? Exactly. Recognizing this interconnectedness doesn't give us a free pass to be jerks. What it does is provide a framework for understanding that our flaws are part of what makes us human. 
and striving for virtue becomes less about achieving some perfect state and more about this ongoing process of growth and self-improvement. It's a journey, not a destination. I like that. Now, speaking of journeys, there's one last stop we need to make on our deep dive into Chris business thinking, mm -hmm. the human soul. And honestly, some of his ideas about the soul, they threw me for a loop at first. Like he talked about the soul being corporeal. Mm meaning it has a physical nature. Right, because it enters and leaves the body. That sounds kind of mystical, doesn't it? It does, but remember, Chrysippus, he was all about logic and reason. He wasn't just throwing out mystical pronouncements. He was trying to grapple with these big questions. What is the soul? How does it relate to the body? Using the tools of logic and observation. So even back then, people were wrestling with these big existential questions, just trying to make sense of it all. Exactly. And they weren't afraid to challenge conventional thinking. They weren't afraid to say, hey, maybe the soul isn't just this ethereal thing. Maybe it's something more. It's mind blowing to think how these ideas from thousands of years ago are still so relevant. We're still asking the same questions about fate, about virtue, about the nature of the soul. It speaks to the enduring power of these ideas. They're not bound by time or culture. Crispus wasn't just some guy theorizing in a vacuum. He was wrestling with questions that are fundamental to the human experience. And that's what makes this deep dive so fun. Wake up, get up, power in your stride. Own your thoughts, let them be your guide. The stars in the night, they shine just like you. Changes the game. A brand new view, so it hard all be torn apart. Resilient mind, powerful start. Opinions fly, but the truth lies within. Break through the noise, let your journey begin. Anger's a fire, burns you down low. Kindness wins the fight. Watch your spirit grow. In the moment I
today I made a decision that enough is enough. I'm tired of being average. I'm tired. I'm tired of being good. I'm tired. I want to go to the dealership and buy the best car. I want to move to the nicest neighborhood. I want to fly first class. I want to go to Hawaii. I want to go to Australia. I, want, I made a decision. Enough is enough. It's showtime. Will the real Eric Thomas please stand up? Some of you in the room right now, you are where you are. You're giving 60% when you have 120 in you. Why? Because you've never made a decision. Those of you in this room, you already there. Your problem is this and stuff. You don't want to give up the gold. You're talented. You just don't want to give up sleep. Listen to me, pound for pound. Any agent in the room, pound for pound. Motivational speaker, pound for pound. Entrepreneur, pound for pound. Athlete, pound for pound. Weightlifter, pound for pound. Whatever you do, I guarantee you when you do it, nobody can do it like you do it. The problem is you don't hardly do it. You love sleep too much. You love that alcohol too much. You love that substance too much. You love that vice too much. There's something that you love more than yourself, than your dream, than your goals. Watch what happens when you have a goal that only has two reasons. See how long that lasts. Watch a goal that has 50 reasons and see how. There's some, somebody called me the other day on an interview, stupid question. E.T., what do you feel like on the days that you don't feel like Ask, ask your question again, please. Well, what do you do on the days that you don't feel like? So I'm going to be honest with you. I'm way past that. Every day I feel like. Every day I feel like eating. Every day I feel like giving my wife the best life. Every day. I Things are only impossible until they are not. We live in an age when unnecessary things are only necessities. Waste no time arguing what a good person should be. Be one. Marcus Aurelius. Stupid is the man who always remains the same. People are more selfish than you think they are. The self is not something to be achieved. It is what you already are. Nisargadatta Maharaj Make sure that you strengthen the positive side of this argument with yourself so that day by day you become healthier, day by day you become stronger, day by day you become wiser, day by day you build a better shield and immunity an inside immunity to ward off disease, but an outside immunity to ward off all the negative and all the trash and all the stuff that would not enhance your personal development nor your promise for the future. So this is so important in understanding the mind. Feed it. We call it food for thought. That's what a big share of this whole seminar is all about these three days, is to writing food to think about, thoughts to think about. And then ideas to debate. And it's not necessarily what's right or what's wrong, but what's better, what's best. This is okay, but this would be better. With this, yes, you can manage, but with this, you can flourish. With this, you can exist. With this, you can live a fantastic life. So, exercising the mind. Now, to develop the mind, you need a good library. Let me give you three parts to your library. Number one is your visual library. Zig and I and others have put things on video so you can see it. We ask you to come here today and see what's going on. So part of it comes by visual, come and see. And then if it's on video, you can see it again and again and again. Key phrase, repetition is the mother of learning. Repetition is where if we hear it again, we see something we didn't see when we heard it the first time. We see something different that we didn't see the first time. Next is your listening library. Zig Ziglar's right. Turn your car into a mobile classroom. You can have a university education in a fairly short period of time.
For several dispositions or inclinations there be of the mind and understanding, which to be aware of thou must carefully observe. And whensoever thou doest discover them, thou must rectify them, saying to thyself concerning every one of them, This imagination is not necessary, this is uncharitable, this thou shalt speak as another man's slave or instrument, than which nothing can be more senseless and absurd. For the fourth, thou shalt sharply check and upbraid thyself. For that thou doest suffer that more divine part in thee, to become subject and obnoxious to that more ignoble part of thy body, and the gross lusts and concupiscences thereof. When you feel like giving up, remember why you held on for so long in the first place. No one will ever give you love because you want him or her to give it. Real love moves freely in both directions. Don't waste your time on anything else. The best way to predict your future is to create it. Peter Drucker Make your enemy brave and strong, so that if defeated, I will not be ashamed. Not every sweet root gives birth to sweet grass. The mind is only a collection of thoughts, but you are the witness of those thoughts. Papaji Here's how to really cash in on this year. Get serious. Life is serious. We're here to instruct. We're here to grow. We're here to learn. We're here to get the best we possibly can. Serious. Life is serious. The future is serious. How come such a difference from those who can reach such incredible heights and those who haven't yet found the answers for their life and their health and their future? We just have to ponder that and let that give us a note of seriousness. A note of seriousness. It's serious whether you win or lose. It's serious whether you succeed or fail. It's serious whether you've got a good future carved out for yourself or you do not have. And I'm asking you to take it serious. Take your own future serious. What you can do for your family, take it serious. This is serious business. So that's the first thing I want to bring to you. To have the best year ever this year, get serious. You know, study, learn, grow, change, develop. Never let it be said you didn't learn. Right? If you want to solve your problems, you got to learn. If you want to take advantage of an opportunity, you got to learn. We can't come here and just give you the marketing plan, give you the product, send you home. We got to stay for a while. Learn, stay for a while. Put on those cassettes and stay for a while. Learn from your own experience, right? So the call didn't go well, all the stuff. Guess what they did when they finished that call? They made another call. What else could we do to make it better? How could we possibly improve? This is called the possibility for life change starts with education. Don't be lazy in learning. Don't be lazy in picking up the ideas. Don't be lazy in learning from your own experience. That's why you've heard from some people that have shared their testimonial here and given you some of their ideas, ways and means. Learning is the beginning of wealth. Learning is the beginning of life change. Do some learning. Take it back home. To have your best year ever, make your dreams come true, and get smart. A few simple disciplines practice. Where without any change in circumstances, the things held to be just by law are seen not to correspond with the concept of justice in actual practice. Such laws are not really just. But wherever the laws have ceased to be advantageous because of a change in circumstances, in that case the laws were for that time just when they were advantageous for the mutual dealings of the citizens and subsequently ceased to be just when they were no longer advantageous. We all live upon the past, and through the past, we are destroyed. If the path is beautiful, let us not ask where it leads. Quad me, nutrit me, destruit, what nourishes me destroys me. Latin proverb. <laughs>